Hello people, so yeah, uh, some work is being done on the wiring front uh, for this uh, switch. That video is getting a bit delayed but will be posted soon. But today we are just going to talk about uh, TPS sensor. I have been getting a few queries when people are having some trouble with the uh, bike. It stalls as soon as you start accelerating or there are some hiccups. This is the TPS throttle position sensor. And this is how it is connected so basically it's good to first of all make sure that it is connected properly uh, once you put this in you should hear a click uh, good practice is to what I do basically whenever I remove it is to remove the airbox cover as well then put a finger feel where the sensor is then make it click inside I'm not sure whether you heard that but that is the basic idea that is how it should be properly connected now let's assume it is not properly connected and what will happen to the bike so let's try and start it before we do that I would recommend that you remove the 15 ampere fuse for the lighting so that's out of the way now let's try and start the bike now you can see the bike has started but the idling is a bit erratic and this is one thing as soon as I start to accelerate the bike is again showing signs of hiccups and even dying out sometimes so if you give full throttle it would still it will still somehow manage like this but it would be erratic but on slow moving pickup like accelerating slowly it is again gonna feel a lot of a problem and again sometimes it's gonna die out sometimes it will just rush through so that is what we need to check first of all that the TPS is properly connected so make sure you do it you bring it out you put it back in make sure it clicks and then try and start the bike the click now let's try and start the bike and all of a sudden you see idle is a lot smoother and once I accelerate, no hiccups whatsoever. It's properly going all the way up. So that is how it should be. So that is one thing to look for if you're having some trouble, first of all. Now how to check if the throttle position sensor is not connected in the right position or if throttle position sensor is not even working, if DPS is not working. So basically even if the TPS is disconnected and not working properly uh, we would be able to run the bike at least with the erratic idling some hiccups might be dying down sometimes while accelerating because the rest of the sensors are uh, there as well like the speed sensor uh, crank speed sensor then there is a map sensor I don't think I can show you but uh, that metal clamp that goes that you see there that's underneath that the map sensor then of course there is the O2 sensor and these are all uh, that's there on the exhaust and these are um, temperature sensor and I'm in a lot then there is an ambient temperature sensor that's inside the airbox as well so they're all giving by the feedback uh, the ECU basically this is the ECU right here and they are giving some feedback to it and it is working with less uh, data technically so only the TPS is not giving out uh, any uh, information at that point uh, but the rest of the sensors are giving some data so it will somehow manage to lug along but with uh, another thing would be that like say if you just clean the throttle body and you took out the position sensor as well but you want to see where it has to be adjusted because if it is too much off then again it is not going to give a proper reading and uh, how it basically works is I have a KTM uh, throttle body just for example and uh, you see this butterfly valve this is connected to that shaft so once you are accelerating the throttle uh, plate opens this butterfly valve opens and this is moving as we move that and this is then connected to a TPS sensor which again has a groove in here that goes into this cut so that there is no confusing and once again you rotate it is gonna rotate that sensor inside and then again that is gonna give feedback to the ECU along with the other sensors 
So how do we check this? Uh, let's begin with that. First of all, we would be needing, uh, needing a voltmeter, then a 25-bit uh, Torx uh, screwdriver. So yeah, this will work as a screwdriver. Needle thread. Now what we need to do at this point is just understand the basic wiring. This uh, black and blue one at the bottom, that is the negative. Then this uh, is the constant red one. And then the top one that you see, this blue one, this is your uh, sensor feed. So you're gonna take a needle and very carefully pry it close to the gap and make sure you can feel it rubbing against metal as you go in. And then just simply connect it. For the next part, uh, that screw that you see, that's a torque screw. So to loosen that, just move the hoses out of the way just put in your Torx screwdriver 25 number and let's say I loosen it just for the example now with the voltmeter to check it and to make sure that it is giving a good reading we would take the comp the negative lead and connect it to the battery negative pretty simple here we go and then the red one can be connected to that needle that we have inserted into the sensor feed. Here we go. And then we switch on the ignition. That is why we took the lighting fuse out. Otherwise, you drain the battery. Now, once I turn this on, if the wiring is connected properly, if that needle is connected properly to the wire, I should get a reading, which I am, and that is showing at uh, 0.56 so and field recommendation for uh, the output is uh, 0.6 volt plus minus 2 so that means we can either go up to say even 4 and it should give a good reading but yeah stick close to 0.6 by moving up I can see you can see that it is going all the way down I'm uh, if you look here on the camera and if I bring it down it is going up on voltmeter. To be very honest, uh, I would recommend that you just first check where yours is at, whether it is within that range, 0 0.6 plus minus uh, 0 0.2. And uh, I preferably uh, like it, uh, how the bike feels at 0 0.55, 0 0.56, it just feels perfect. Now, what will happen if we move it up to say uh, seven, or uh, eight and uh, at seven that means that the throttle is already slightly open when the bike is starting 0 0.7 7 7.5 and you would uh, once you start doing that you would feel that okay there is some uh, fumes uh, you can smell extra petrol that is being fed so that is not needed doesn't work like that I've also tried it at four that would be moving it up and again there is some uh, sluggishness while idling and some problems while uh, uh, taking off the bike does stall sometime so of all the settings I am okay with six uh, that's okay for me uh, as far as readings go but uh, I like it at 5.5 to be very honest so I'm uh, decided to stay at 5.5 there we go close enough 5.4 5.5 now I'll just tighten it here yeah, that's at 5.5, 5.6 basically. Now let's try and start the bike. And there you go. You see that perfect idle just singing in harmony. You accelerate. And bike is holding up. Now what will happen, say, like if uh, you are way off and if, say, it is point... Uh, one volt then again once you try starting the bike it should give again a very erratic idling and again some problems some hiccups while you like see again you can hear it is not sounding right and again while like accelerating there is that hiccup so that's one thing now let's move it down now how to check if this is working fine and reading all the way the way to do it is again ignition on 
volt meter here and once I accelerate to full throttle that would make the blue uh, that uh, butterfly valve again connected to that shaft on the TPS and the rating will go up to point uh, sorry 3.8384 so I cannot capture both of those screens at once let me try accelerating and then now you will see I'm rotating the throttle is going up now I'm at full position and at full lock 3.83 so that is how you check it that is how you adjust it if adjustment is required so now of course this is all to be done in conjunction with the proper idling of the bike I've already covered a video on that and uh, of course the rest of the sensors have to be taken to be okay the spark plug gap has to be good wall clearance has to be good the bike has to be in basically good nick before you move on to checking for this and yes uh, sometimes it is just a loose connection sometimes that uh, socket is just not properly connected so make sure it is properly connected if you're having a trouble like this so that is it it looks intimidating easy and everything but it is pretty basic stuff it is like just all the input is going in and it is just deciding how much uh, fuel at what frequency at uh, for how much of uh, duration has to be fed into the engine with the help of the uh, what do you call that fuel injector uh, the solenoid just opens based on the input that is given by all these sensors so they are all working together even if one is off you would have some problem that is the basic idea to remember and as I said start off with TPS one easy to access so I hope this was helpful thanks bye